Merhaba arkadaşlar. Hepiniz hoş geldiniz. Ertuğrul Analiz kanalında bugün çok değerli bir konuğumuz var. İsrail'den çok önemli bir gazeteci Ori Cooper e, bizlere Eren Zahavi ile ilgili önemli bilgiler verecek. Hiç bilmediğimiz en ufak detaylar, her şeyi ona soracağız. Yes, Mr. Cooper, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you for hosting me. It's an honor to have you. Yeah. Your honor. And let's start with the, like just the first question. Like, who is Eran Zahawi? Like, well, it's not it's not an an easy an easy answer. There's no easy answer for that because um, he's maybe the most interesting player to play ever in Israel. Um, football wise, he's a top. Scorer. When I when I say top scorer, I mean top Premier. It can be top Premier League scorer. If you look on only on on his finishing in front of the goals, that's it. He's he's a, a scoring machine. He broke up the um, scoring record for one season in Israel. He scored 35 goals in a season, and then he moved to China and scored and and break the goal record for a season in China. How many players do you know that? hold the same record for the most goals in one season in two different countries in two years difference. Uh, it's something you don't see much, even if at all. And the interesting story about him is that he started to do it in quite late age. He didn't do it since he was uh, like 18. He didn't even play as a striker True. in the beginning. And, and that's the interesting stuff about him because even that he's, I believe, 33 now. Yes. He's, he's still, I don't know, in his top of his game as a striker because um, he plays that position I don't know, for like eight years and not mm-hmm. 20 years. Um, so he's maybe the best scorer, one of the two best scorers ever. Uh, to play uh, in Israel, I believe, and I know that he had an offers to uh, be uh, a decent player in one of the top leagues. He almost moved to Tottenham uh, a few months ago. Um, so yes, if you look football-wise, in front of the goal, he's a top player. I cannot, I don't think Fenerbahce can find a better pure scorer than Eran Zavi. Well, we're hoping it will be finalized. Sometime in the very near future. Yeah. Like, this is the, just one common question that like, people don't know in Turkey. Like, what is his position? People not able to describe it. Because I think in China, he's striker, but sometimes he's playing behind the striker, like number 10. But... What is his position like? Yeah, he's, he he will come to Fenerbahce to play a striker, pure striker. Period. Uh, he will not move to a team that we like him to play in a different position. You have to understand. He started his career as an attacking midfielder or even on the left wing. Oh. And he was not. He was not so good. He was a good player, but not amazing. Mm-hmm. And then he scored one of the most memorable memorable goals in Israel history. Mm-hmm. He played for Hapoel Tel Aviv, and they played against one of their main uh, rivals, Beitar Jerusalem. It's like a left wing, right wing derby. Yeah, mm-hmm. and it was the last game of the season, and his team Hapoel need to win to win the championship. They win to win the match if they want to win the championship, and he scored a winning goal away in Jerusalem uh, with the, the the arch rivals in the 93th minute. Okay, uh-huh. and since this goal, he became a striker. Now think, like it's like in in, in Turkey, you have Fenerbahce, Galatasaray, Besiktas. Okay, so yeah. it's like he will play for Fenerbahce, and they will win the championship because of his goal, not against Galatasaray, but against Besiktas, in the 93 minutes, and then he will move to play for Galatasaray. Listen what I'm saying. Oh my God! This is show. Okay. Yeah. Betrayal. He scored the the championship goal. He played for. Let's say he played for Fenerbahce. He he he scored the winning goal against Besiktas 
in the last minute of the season, and then he moved to play for Galatasaray. This is this how crazy it is. Okay, you have to understand it. So, in this game, he became a striker. When he scored this goal in the last minute, people understood he had to play a striker. He moved to Italy, to Palermo, to play as an attacking midfielder yet. They didn't know he's a striker. And he, had, he, he didn't have easy time. He fought for the position, for playing time, with Josip Ilicic, now in Atalanta. Yeah, a really good player. Yes, very good player. Same position in Palermo. So he didn't got a lot of minutes. And then he came back to Maccabi, to Galatasaray, okay? To, uh, to the, the, the, the arch rivals, to the, the, the, the most hated team for the ones that he, he, he grew up for. And then there, he, only there he started to play pure striker, striker in the second season. And since then, he's only a striker. And he will not play in a different position because he's a scoring machine. We hope to say the same when he comes to Fener. <laughs> like, like, what is the like his weakness? Okay, he's like we know, like one of his strengths is like he's a goal machine. But does he has any weakness in the like? On the uh, well, pitch, he's or not, he's not really fast. He's not a fast player. He's not the striker that um, you will send to one with another one. He's not even a top dribbler. Okay, you will not see him taking a lot of players one on one. He's not that kind of player. Okay, mm -hmm. he is a player that have a really good movement without the ball. Okay, he can come back make one touch, you know, with the ball to help with uh, possession, and then come back to the, to the box to get the ball uh, with, because of his good, uh, good movement. So he has a good movement without the ball. He has a really, um, uh, I will say, confidence or um, in front of the goal. He, he don't see anybody. He's like, he don't care. And um, he, he has a really good finishing in front of the goal. And most important, he always there in the top matches. He took Maccabi Tel Aviv, he took them to Champions League by himself, to the group stage. Okay? Uh, but if you look on the weaknesses, there is a reason he's not playing for Real Madrid, yeah? Because he's not fast enough, uh, he don't have a good uh, uh, dribbling, he's not doing those kind of stuff. Movement is the composure, I will say, yeah, mentality, composure, and uh, uh, finishing. Another subject, subject we have to talk about, is his relationship with fans and what's going on on the outside world, yeah. because it is his really important part of his, of his game. You remember the, the Turkish telenovel I, I told you right now, with Besiktas, Galatasaray, and yes. This is the story continue, okay? You have to understand that. He played for Maccabi, okay? The biggest rival of the teams that he grew up for. And he scored a goal against Hapoel in the first derby that he played against his four other team. Now you have to think that he maybe will not celebrate, right? Because he played against his former club. The opposite happened. <laughs> he came to the stand of Hapoel fans and made his celebration. Oh my God! Stop with the fans. Okay? <laughs> if, so, he, if he did that to Fenerbahce fans, I don't know what would happen. I don't want to imagine. Now listen, mm, no. again, it's like a guy that move. Okay, you know what? Let's do it the opposite. Let's let's do it like he moved from Galatasaray to Fenerbahce, so we will be able to like him. Okay? Let's say that he grew up. He's like um, Hassan, Hassan Shash. Okay? He grew up in Gal. He played for Galatasaray or uh, Akan Shukur. Okay? He played for Galatasaray most of his career, he mm -hmm. scored the most important goals, and then he moved to Fenerbahce. In the first game against Galatasaray, he scored a goal, he came to Galatasaray fans, and do. Uh. <laughs> Crazy, right? Yeah. Now, Un unimaginable in, in Turkey. <laughs> in every match in the derby, every match, every time he played, he scored. One, two, hat-trick, every time. 
He's a winner, is what you're saying. Yeah, and every time he did that until one game after doing that in a corner kick, a fan of Hapoel, his former club from the Ultras, invaded into the pitch and punched him. Oh, and yeah. This is TV show, that's, yeah? I will, that's to be expected. I will, I will yeah. definitely watch the video of that after <laughs> yeah. this conversation. Watch the video and punched him and kicked him. And Zavi punched him back. <laughs> so He's crazy. He has a crazy personality. This, this, what happened then, he became a legend for Maccabi. You have to understand it, right? Yeah, of course. Even that he didn't grow up there and he grew up in the rival team, he became a legend. But everyone from the other clubs in Israel hated him. Not only the guys from Hapoel, because you don't do things like that. So, let's the story continue. He came to play for the national team. He got the captain, okay? He got the captain, Ambran, even that a lot of people didn't like him. They played, Israel played against Macedonia, 2017. The game is in Haifa, the third city of Israel, okay? We have, we said he scored against Jerusalem, he played for Tel Aviv, game in Haifa. All the people in Haifa don't like him because they are also big rivals, okay? They are like clubs and sport, okay? Mm -hmm. They don't like him. They, Cursed him all the match. It's a national team match. The fans, 30,000. They cursed him, the player that play for them. What the have he do? He didn't go silence. He took the captain Ambra and he threw it away in the middle wow. of the match. Now, you have to think about that. This is the national team. It's not just a regular team, yeah? You can't it's, just do that. Yeah. You can't do that. You can't. You just can't. Did, did, did, he, did he get a cap after that match or no? Was that the end of the well, national career? Well, after that, he got a suspension. Um, a year and a half, I believe, or two years, something like that. But then when a new coach arrived, uh, maybe you remember Andy Herzog, who was the star of uh, Austria national team mm -hmm. in the past. Um, he became the national team coach of Israel two years ago, and he took him back. Now, story continue. Not just he took him back. Before that, Zahavi was really bad in the national team all the time. He was bad. That's why they booed him. But after he came back from the suspension, the suspension, he became a superstar also in the national team. He was top goal scorer in all of Europe, in the qualification for Euro 2020, right? He scored every match, stunning goals, 30 meters, 35 meters, bicycle kick, whatever you want. He didn't do it only in China or in Israel. He did it in, you know, against Austria, against Scotland, against Slovenia, which is, uh, uh, he scored a magnificent goal. You have to, to, to watch it against Jan Oblak, the goal of Atletico, goalkeeper of Atletico Madrid play for Slovenia. So he was amazing. So <laughs> the story never ends, you know? It's, uh, he has uh, a really magnet personality. Everybody has an opinion. All that you are in his side, all that you are not in his side, it depends where are you, you know, who, who do you like, which club do you like. Uh, so this is also, I think, a really important aspect in him when he signed for a club, because Turkey, obviously Fenerbahce is, uh, uh, you know, heated club, it's, it's, a, it's not only football, right? Yes, More than that. definitely. Um, so, so I believe it's, it, it can take part as well, you know, what's going on with him in his, in his life, not only when kicking or heading the ball. Like, so we can also say about him, like, the coach is pretty important for him because, like, this is the, what I understand with the, the national team. When the coaches change, when 
the coaches make a system for him. It works for him pretty well if he's okay with the coach. Yes. He, he need, well, he need a coach that will tell him, listen, you're playing as striker. Mm-hmm. You're my guy. Mm-hmm. Don't have to come to midfield in this one, two, three situation. You can play like a free role as a striker mm-hmm. and do your thing. That's uh, what works for him. Uh, is that what the Herzog, the, the national team coach, told him? That's how it works. Um, yeah, so I, I, I guess you're, I guess you're right. Uh, you have to understand that on the other side, it's not that he had any conflict with coaches or something like mm-hmm. that. He, he was, he was good anyhow. Okay, uh, when he played for Maccabi, he won uh, three championships. In a row, in every year it was a different coach. Okay, uh, Maccabi Tel Aviv in recent years they taken a coach from a, all, only coaches from abroad. They are coming, they have a good season, and they they uh, moving forward. Like Paulo Sosa, who is now coach of Bordeaux, or, or uh, uh, Oscar Garcia, the coach of Celta Vigo. All of them started in Maccabi, mm-hmm. in Tahavi. And he, he did great for any one of them, okay? Uh, and also Peter Bosch, now the, the coach of Leverkusen. He did, he did well for every one of them. So I don't think he have a problem with the coach. But if you want to have uh, the maximum from Zahavi, yes. So the coach yes. will tell him, listen, you score the goal and that's it. <laughs> like, also, like, uh, when I research about him a little bit, Like the people was just saying that like, he's a little bit selfish player and who want to have the ball all the time. Like, is this right? Or is it just team player? Mm. Uh, I would say it's like Cristiano Ronaldo, mm-hmm. not in the same level, yeah? Yeah, Game. of course. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, but in the way of thinking, is that he'll, he'll always look for the ball. He always looks for the ball, score himself. I don't know if you say it's selfish. Maybe you can call it selfish. I don't know. He okay. believes he's the best player on the team. Every team that he's playing. Could, uh, could, could we say that he's like a little Zlatan? Zlatan Ibrahimovic? Kind of like because we heard that he has his ego because of his play, right? He, he's a great player. Yeah. So yeah, you can say that. He has yeah. too confident. Yeah, maybe this is good compression, maybe, maybe. But Zlatan, I think, doing a lot of stuff that helps other players in the team as well. He, okay. Taking the ball, you know, when, I don't know, with the head a little bit to do, uh, or that he have just with his crazy legs to touch the ball and then made an assist. And Zahavi, right. I think, is, if you look at his character, it's more like... Yeah, his you know, character is like... All the time. Um, And again, like Ronaldo, he, he did it. He's doing it great. He's, he's, he's really good in it. You have to, yeah. you have to understand that. And and and I'm, when I'm saying this is a is a score, it's not like when moving into the box. It's also from you know long range, free kicks, headers, uh, everything. Um, so that's what he he know to do. That's what he like to do. And that what he will try to do. He, He will not end the season with 10 assists. It will mm-hmm. not going to happen. But he can score 30 goals. That's what we need. <laughs> he won't stop. <laughs> that, that, that, that what you know. Um, it's important to see, you know, he's not, he's not a kid. Okay? He's, um, maybe his last stop, you know, his last big contract. Mm-hmm. What he will get now. Um, We have to see how it's uh, how that uh, affect his uh, career. Uh, but even in China, you know, a lot of players, foreign players, big players, go to China just for the money and to rest, yeah. right? Not, not a big league. The defenses are quite poor. Uh, the Havi did not do it. He he went there with full ambitions. That's why he was the top scorer in, in the league. 
you want to score all the time, you know, that's what I'm saying. Like, you, know, you don't care against who is playing. It's, he can play against under 17 kids. He don't care. He want to score. He's a winner so, and he wants to win. So that's why I believe um, even even it's maybe his last contract, he he will do the maximum. He, he, he will try to do good things, right? But uh, physically, I, it will be it will be interesting to see him as he's not a kid anymore. Uh, I believe it is it, interesting, uh, and also of course it's interesting to see if he will come to Fenerbahce because we also have the indication uh, that he, this is the main target. But um, we know there is an option for for the MLS for Los Angeles, for example. Uh, LA Galaxy. Um, yeah, and um, there is, you have to understand that he have, he have really importance in, um, to be in a place where he have a community, I guess. And in Turkey, he have the benefit that this is really close to Israel. Cultures are similar. Cultures are similar. A lot of Israelis come in tourist and all mm -hmm. the time. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so it's nice. People can visit him. He's like a multimillionaire, right? He did a lot of money in China. Uh, he's, he can celebrate with people all day. So that's good. But in, in, in LA, for example, in LA or in Miami, mm -hmm. there is a huge Israeli community, mm -hmm. which is also something can be important for him. Um, like we know that for example, in China, in Guangzhou, where he play, you don't think that there are people over there, but there is an Israeli... He, he made his Israeli community in Guangzhou. So, I don't know, maybe it will be part of his thinking before signing for, for World Club. But we also have the indication that Fenerbahce is the, uh, is the target number one of him, yeah. Did he officially ended his contract in China? Yeah, yeah, he is officially, we, it was a big surprise. We knew that he's going to move, but basically uh, the contract, he was allowed to sign for any club uh, from December mm -hmm. 2020, yeah. right? December yeah. 2020. Right. Um, but because of the coronavirus, they didn't release him to the national team games, uh, the Chinese, it's taking place right now, Israel playing... Uh, on Friday against Scotland. Um, so it's made uh, like a conflict between them. And uh, they decided to terminate the contract now, not to wait to December. So uh, now he's in it. Now he came to Israel for the national team. Now he's in Glasgow with the national team. And he will come back afterwards or to go to Istanbul. We don't know. We don't know. <laughs> That's what we're hoping for. Yeah. I know. <laughs> The only thing that scares me is, based on what you say, I'm afraid he's going to enjoy Istanbul nightlife too much. No, no, no. He's not clubber or something like that. Okay, he's, I, not, oh, he's doing it at home with his people. He's okay. not this kind of guy. No, okay. no. Not this and the other, thing that, the other thing that scares me a bit is uh, his egoistic side, based on what you said. Yeah, well, uh, yeah, yeah. I understand what you're saying. Because now, in a club like Turkey, in the past, we had... Uh, you know, troubles. For example, Nicolas Anelka had some issues and he played one season, uh, well, one and a half seasons, I should say, because he came in the middle of 2004-2005 season. He played the next season and after that he won it out. Yeah. Well, listen, in, in the national team, people saying, for example, fans of the national team that don't, fans don't like Maccabi Tel Aviv, so they don't like Zahavi. So they saying that in the national team, yeah, he's taking everything for himself, so he's succeeding, but the team is not succeeding. Well, mm -hmm. that's kind of bullshit because the team didn't succeed even before. Well, Israel is bad. All right, so period. So uh, uh, you don't have what to expect in that. Uh, but yes, I, I, I get your point. I get your point. He, he's looking to score. He needs... Well, I don't know who will be the striker next to him. But if the striker next to him will be bigger than him, maybe that's kind of a problem. Yeah, if he if he comes, he'll be our main striker. That's for sure, and he might be the lone striker, to be honest. Yeah, all right. So yeah, that, that's cool for him. Well, he played mostly in you know 
him his main success in Guangzhou and also in Israel. Uh, he played as the main striker in 4-3-3, like classic mm -hmm. formation. Um, and by the way, there is also the benefit of the colors of the shirt. Is oh, yeah. Maccabi and Fenerbahce, the same color. Yeah. yeah, true. So it's easy. By the way, in the matches of Maccabi, not now because of the virus, we don't have fans in the stands, but in general, you see many fans with Fenerbahce shirts. Yeah. I will believe have, that. Well, of course, most of them Maccabi, Maccabi shirts, but you have Fenerbahce, you have and... Bokas, you know, all the... the, the, the oh, yeah, the same the, color. Of course. So, uh, yeah, you will see a lot of Fenerbahce Zahavi at Maccabi matches, I guess. Uh, if we... <laughs> <laughs> That'll be great. So, yeah. Another question that you probably know the possibility of transfer for um, Veda Muriki, you know, Veda Murici. Mm -hmm. So he may go to Lazio soon. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if you know about him but he's a center forward who keeps the ball in the third zone close to the uh, keeper. Mm -hmm. So what should Fenerbahce fans expect from Zahavi? Like, should it be kind of the same to Wedat or like, it's, it's totally different. I mean, yeah, it, it from what, what, what you said, that's what I thought. It's different, but just to make sure that everyone understands. So what should we expect from him? Yeah, what, what, what did you describe is like a pure target striker in the box who keep the ball, he can play with the back to the goal and so on. Right. And the half is not the same, the same player. He's not stay there and waiting for the ball. He's always going back um, and make one, two touches, you know, passes with other guys and then move again. He's, he's moving a lot. A lot. This is one of his main quality, movement without the ball. He moves a lot. He moves to the left, he moves to the right, he moves backwards. He's not staying in, in, in the box. He scored he's a lot from the box, but it's always when he's doing movement from the outside into the box. So in that regard, he's a different player. He's a different player. Uh, he's not target striker at all. And of course, you can understand that from his background. As we said, he started as an attacking midfielder, left winger. Um, and he wasn't great in that. He was good, but not great because he don't have top dribbling or top speed. So when he moved to play for a striker, you, you can see his main quality, the movement, the finishing, but definitely not a, a target player. He's pleasant move to his original position all the time, to the wings and to the attacking midfield. What I understand from that is, as long as Fenerbahce have a good playmaker, Zahavi will move around and probably score a lot. Yeah, he's, he's um, when you play, when one, let's say, I don't know what system Fenerbahce is, is going to play, what for kind of formation, but when he had a midfielder, a central midfielder, he may not have to be an attacking midfielder. Like if you play 4-3, and the number eight, even. Uh, uh, if he have a really good passing abilities, they will work really good together. He had a really one good friend in Maccabi named Dor Micha. Uh, he's a midfielder and he, he assisted him so much. Uh, second, he also got in a lot of assists from the wing back. Um, in, in crosses, he had, as I said, a really good movement. What did I suggest, suggest you to have a look? It's not his great goals, but it really characterized him. Uh, you can find it on YouTube. Go to Maccabi Tel Aviv, uh, qualified for Champions League when they played against Pelzen from Czech Republic. Mm -hmm. and, Victoria Pelzen. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. And, and Victoria Pelzen watched the better team. They were much better. Much better. But Maccabi qualified for the group stage because they have his score twice. And you have to look at those goals. He got, he got across from the wing, from the fullback, and he made a tremendous movement without the ball into the box and scores with the header. And until then, we didn't even know that he knew how to score goals with his head. And suddenly, out of nowhere, he came with this movement and he scored these important goals. And since then, he started to do that. 
all the time as well. So he, his main character is he's coming from the, uh, from the back or from, you know, to the box and get his crosses from the midfield, from the uh, fullbacks and scored in, in a one touch. That's, that's, that's, that's the guy. Sounds amazing. We have we got a couple good pastors in the team, so I'm getting excited here. And a couple, you know, like the left and the right wingers, mm -hmm. they're going to be good. So I don't know. There are a lot of scoring, I guess, if he comes. <laughs> yeah, well, as I told you, he, he broke a record for of more than 50 years of most goals in a season uh, in two countries, right? So that's... Mm -hmm. That's uh, his stats are crazy, like it's kind of unbelievable. So, yeah. people that's why kind of like they can't believe it. What kind of stats are these? Like 150 games in Israel, and you score 120 goals and 15 assists. Yeah, and you have to it's like crazy. It's not, you don't have a lot of attacking football right here, right? It's right, not um, like the leagues in the Netherlands or in Switzerland. Yes. When you have 3.5 goals per match or something like that, it's much less. And, yes. and yet, he scored those numbers. Yes, it's, it's, it is crazy. And as I said, listen, Very he impressive. scored the championship goal when he played for Hapoel Tel Aviv. He scored in every derby he played in both teams. He scored the goals that took Maccabi to the Champions League. So he's doing it in, in the right time. Well, you know, in the most and big games. games, yeah, yeah. If he does half of what you are telling us for Fenerbahce, he'll be a legend. <laughs> well, us. yeah, but again, you have to understand the age of the player. He's 33. He's um, well, fair enough. He, yeah, we'll see if for, you know if he will sign for how many years the contract will be, um, and so on. By the way, there is a chance. I don't believe it's a big one, mm -hmm. but there is a chance he will go back to Maccabi. I was just going to mention yeah. that if there is a chance because we heard some rumors. That was one of the questions we were going to ask. Yeah, but the problem is, is, is, is the money, right? Maccabi have a uh, fair player investigation. Mm -hmm. We have similar things. We're, we're struggling just as much. Yeah, all right. So they cannot um, you know, pay him a lot, I guess. And also there is a tax problem. Like when you, because he played abroad for a lot of time, he didn't pay taxes in Israel. So if he's coming back now, he has to pay to the, to the country. He's not going to want to do that. <laughs> yeah, but there are, the, he has an agreement with his Chinese team that they pay some of it if he's coming back. It's crazy story also. Um, they wanted him, listen, every few months, they, they signed him for a new contract. It's amazing. Every, every few months, every three months, he got millions and millions more. Because they afraid he, he will go away. He was so good. Um, so he, he got anything they anything he wanted from them. Any specific, you know, uh, clauses in in, in uh, the contract. That, uh, he, he, mu he, he, he must he must uh, he must have a clever manager as well. If that's yeah. the case. <laughs> yeah, probably. Yeah, <laughs> yeah so I mean, based on what yeah, you said, I'm very excited. Maccabi, of course. Um, um, wanting him to come back, but I, I, I, I don't believe it's, it will happen now. Uh, maybe he will go to Fenerbahce or maybe he will go to, to MLS. MLS. And after two or three seasons, he will come back here. But I, I don't believe it will happen. Uh, I'm excited to watch him play with Jose Souza and Luis Gustavo. That's for sure. <laughs> mm -hmm. So, how about Bashakshir? If you heard. Uh, are they interested in signing him? Have you ever we heard, heard like that? We heard about that, but um, it's not that strong. I guess. When when when the rumors about Bashakshir started, he didn't been released from his Chinese team yet, and from what I understand now, there is no chance they could pay him, pay the money to release him, and also to pay the money to sign him for a contract. So then I understand the, the, the rumors stop and a good, even the way any kind of negotiation stopped there. 
Um, yeah, so I, I, in the last month, I, or, or maybe in the last three weeks, I, I, I didn't hear anything about the structure and the house in the garden. So one of the important questions also that people wonder, so does he help the team with the defense? So people are not very sure if he's a, like if he's staying forward and not coming back to help, but no. yeah. Well, listen, um, yeah, if I have to answer the question in yes or no, I would say no, he's, he's staying in front. He's not helping the defense so much. Yeah, he's not this, this kind of a striker. Um, but when he played for the national team and we're playing like big team, mm -hmm. he's doing defense. It's not that um, you can, you can, it's not black or white, right? It's not right. Uh, an answer that is yes or no, but he's not the kind of strikers that uh, you know them for helping the defense a lot. Okay, yeah, if, if that will be my answer if I have to answer. It makes sense. Yeah, it makes a lot of sense. So other other rumors that we have in Turkey. Um, so his wife has doubts on coming to Turkey. Mm -hmm. I, I would say that like some people say it's religion and some people say that, you know, they're, they're putting a lot of things out there just as a reason that his wife has worries coming to Turkey. Is there anything like that? Have you ever heard something? Well, I cannot, I cannot answer in his uh, wife's name because I don't know. Right. I can tell you what I think is, it's possible. Well, and, and I will answer that with the general mood in Israel. Um, you know, Israel, well, it, Turkey is the main touristic uh, place for Israelis together with Greece for mm -hmm. many years now. It's close, it's fun, it's not too expensive, nice people, mm -hmm. you like it. Good food. <laughs> <laughs> however, however, in uh, recent years, uh, I guess maybe because of uh, you know some government mm -hmm. decisions, Exactly. Yeah. In both Turkey, in both countries, but mo mainly in Turkey, I guess. Um, the feeling of the people in the country maybe a little bit change. For example, I I been to Istanbul. I don't know a year, two years ago. Okay, with my wife. It was nice. It was we had a really good time. But my parents, for example, if you tell them, listen, we want to go to vacation in Istanbul. They will say, no, we afraid. No way. <laughs> really? Is, now, I, I don't think it's sort of religious, okay? It's not pure religious. We don't, I, I'm not a religious guy at all, right? I don't care. <laughs> but, uh, um, Me too. People here in the media <laughs> that, you know, uh, some, what, what people, I don't know, government, Turkey are mm -hmm. saying, and so on and so on and so on. And they're getting things from the media, and that's it. F for me, I know that I have no problem to go to Turkey and have a good time. Okay, but other people, they may be differently in the way that they look about it I don't know, five years ago. So, uh, so yes, if, if there is a chance, all right? There is a really good chance that she's saying, maybe I, I, I prefer to live in, in another place, okay? If you, if you ask her a few years ago, maybe she, she wouldn't say it. We also know that football players who played in, in, in Turkey, Israeli football players who played in Turkey in the past, oh, yeah. had a really good time and good yes. careers. And uh, they yeah, have good course, memories. Of course, yeah, of course. Good, I'm, good and bad. <laughs> uh, uh, but also uh, guys that didn't play for the big clubs, like Pini Balili, who played for like uh, five different clubs, like yes. and Konya Spor and so on. Yeah. He, he played has, in Istanbul Spor. Istanbul Spor, yeah. He, he, he feels tur half Turkish. He, he, like, the mentality was right, you know, he, he had a good time. But yeah, I, I do believe people look at it. There are some people who look at it a, a little bit different now. 
and mainly because of government saying exactly and perhaps she wants to live the American life perhaps again uh, she wants to perhaps live the American life MLS. Maybe, maybe you know it's attractive LA is attractive you know uh, and it's really attractive as I said before it's attractive to Israelis there is a huge huge Community. Israeli community over there. It's like you say Turkish in Germany, okay? You have, you have <laughs> huge uh, Israeli community, uh, of course, in the US in general, but mainly, mainly in Los Angeles. Um, so yeah, it can, be, it, can be, it can be really attractive, yeah, I, I, I see. It. But you have to understand, she, she lives now in, in Guangzhou in China, where it's not so attractive, it, or at least it wasn't in the first place. But uh, yeah, you know, the money is too good. <laughs> <laughs> but I think you will be very happy in Istanbul. I think the the best city in the Europe for some people, yeah, which well, for me I can say is the uh, best city in the world. Also for us, yeah, in Israel, like Israel media, Israel fans, we want to see Zahavi in Fenerbahce. It's more interesting for us than to see him playing in Los Angeles. Because he moved from the Israeli league as one of the biggest superstars ever. And he moved to China. Now, they're broadcasting the matches in, on TV. But it's not interesting, okay? It's Chinese league. Not many people are watching. Yeah, well, well, well to see him playing in, in good European levels, that's what we want to see. We want, because we know he was good enough. When he moved to China, he could move to Spanish league and be a good player. So was money the only factor in his move to China? Well, yeah, it was most, mostly money. Mm -hmm. Now, you have to understand, it's not, it, it wasn't only the money he got in his salary, which he is got all the other things too. crazy numbers and everything that he wanted. And also that they paid a huge number for Maccabi for his transfer fee, mm -hmm. which at the time was the highest transfer fee ever play, been paid to an Israeli player, about 8 million euro, right? Um, so, no, well, I guess that was the best offer for Maccabi, that was the best offer for him financially, he went there. Uh, we want to see him, and this is the last chance. We want to see him playing in a decent level European club. That's what, what we want to see. It's interesting, you know, it's interesting for us, for us to watch it. And the Turkish League, by the way, is broadcasting here live, even now, without Zahavi, mm -hmm. uh, and without Israeli players. Um, it started a, a season ago. The last season was, was live in Israel. So it's nice. Um, yeah, we, we want to see it. We want it the same as you. <laughs> Hopefully like, it will happen. Yeah. Like one of the journalists in Turkey, like his name is like Levent Material. He was the one that first announced him. Like he's close to Fenerbahce. And he keeps saying that, no, he's going to join the Fenerbahce. Like, he was he was right before when the Falcao joined the Galatasaray, uh, or when Vedat Murki joined the Fenerbahce. Uh, after he announced, the people got more excited, and he even even make a song for him before he announced him. <laughs> well, I have to say that I think that media in Turkey took the. Um, the situation uh, a forward a little bit too soon. Uh, Way too soon. It's, yeah. it's obvious we do it the same, right? But mm -hmm. uh, as far as we know, as far as we know, a week ago, mm -hmm. there was no official offer from Fenerbahce. They were talking, okay? Mm -hmm. They tried to figure out how much they have to pay for one mm -hmm. to come and so on. But that there is no official offer with a number on the mm -hmm. table. Now maybe it's been changed, you know, 
yesterday, two days ago, three days ago, maybe. Uh, but I think people in Turkey took it a little bit, a little took the step forward a little bit too soon. Um, yes, it, Fenerbahce. I, I we will not be surprised if we will end there, mm -hmm. but we still have to wait and see. It's, it's I think it's not close to to, to a done deal, not even close. Yeah, I mean, based on what you say, I don't think we can afford him. <laughs> He's gonna want too much money. Not yeah, that he doesn't deserve it. He deserves it, of course. The question is, what are the alternatives that we have regarding money? Okay? And, MLS. Uh, MLS will pay him big bucks. Maybe and maybe not. I don't know. Maybe. But I don't know. Co you know, we have the COVID-19 thing. That is true. It's affecting, you know, finance. I don't know. I don't know. Um, we have to wait and see. And by the way, he he have he have his guys, and it's something that I'm just thinking about. And and, and maybe I don't know. It, it's just out of my head, and I think it's interesting. He have guys that um, really um, publishing his brand. For example, that create shirts with his brand, like. EZ7, like around the Harvey 7, yeah, and things like that. And he is the only and first and only player in Israel ever to have guys doing anything like that. And um, maybe, maybe if he's coming to Fenerbahce, he can make some money out of uh, his merchandise and whatnot, selling shirts or whatever to make it something like this to be part of his agreement with the club. Maybe. We could, we could sell the shirts in Fenariums, which is the official uh, store of Fenerbahce. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so maybe he will make any kind of agreement like Ronaldo. Again, I'm talking about Ronaldo. Like Ronaldo will make <laughs> this with Juventus, yeah? Like uh, they sell in shirts, he gets some of the money. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Maybe there is anything because he, he's very, he, he and his guys, they're very calculated financially, right? You, they care a lot about money, basically. Yeah, but, but if you want it, you don't need the money now, yeah? After those years in mm -hmm. China. If you want it, if Fenerbahce is if, if the team that you want to go to, from the alternatives that we have, maybe they can be creative and do it in some way. That's what I'm saying. Hopefully. Like, our president, Mr. Ali Koch, is like, he's the one of the biggest businessmen in Turkey. Perhaps so, in the world too. Yeah. So maybe he can work some magic. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so your your impressions is it? So you said that he made the money in China. So your impressions would be like: Is he looking for more money, or is looking for like okay, it's it's an okay money, but I wanna I wanna leave a spot in that country or for that team. Or I want to play in a bit higher level. I, I, I'm not, I okay. Well, we have to, we have to, um, to divide the answers in, in, in a few answers. I guess a few answers. Um, where he want to play, we don't know. We don't know. This is the truth. Nobody can tell you. Uh, if you, if you want to leave a mark in, you know, a good European team, why he didn't go? To Tottenham when he got the, the opportunity mm -hmm. a year ago. I don't know why he's not trying to go to, to Spain when, when there are some clubs that want it. I, I, I don't know. Uh, so, but if it's only the money, why he's not staying in China? Uh, he could move to a bigger club in China and make like he's making 10 million euros a year. Right. Fenerbahce can now pay that, that's for sure. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, not, I know, they cannot pay it. He's like, in, maybe maybe not 10 million euros, 10 million dollars, all right? He's making 10 million dollars a year. Nobody will pay him this kind of money outside of China, right? Nobody. So why he is living in China if the money is important? Now, so I, I, I guess that it's somewhere in, in, in between. He won a different place. But the money is still important. Okay, it will be less than China, but it's still important. Mm -hmm. Okay, 
And I think that's why the MLS is, is really an option, okay? But I don't know, maybe he, he won this uh, challenge in Europe. If, if he really won the challenge in Europe, he will play in Europe with the teams that will give him good money. Not the money that he's getting paid in China, but yet good money. He will not move from $10 million to $1 million, right? Yeah, sure. It will be somewhere in between. Well, we can't that's, even pay five, sure. in my opinion. But we'll, maybe we'll work some magic, as we said earlier. <laughs> maybe. Listen, they're talking about him coming back to Maccabi, and Maccabi cannot pay one. Okay, so, I, I, I don't know. <laughs> well, okay, because the, the money in China is something else. So high. <laughs> That I don't. You cannot compare it to to, to anywhere else. And it's true. Uh, by the way, he have some businesses. Maybe he have some businesses in China that he's doing good money. You know, uh, outside of football, and it's good for him. Yeah. You can never know. I I know you don't have time, and I would like to just ask the one question, except to Zahawi. Mm -hmm. Like I know you are a. You are doing this scouting as well. You doing uh, what? Scouting. Yes, I'm. Uh, I'm a former. I'm not yeah. doing it right now, but I, I used to work in a big scouting company. Yeah, in the past. Like, is there any player you can say any Turkish club should interest in Israel? Like the young player, or you think they are gonna be like they are gonna be good player in the future? Is there You're talking any? about Israel or worldwide? Doesn't matter. Like, both, both, both, both. Yeah. worldwide and Israel. <laughs> well, well. Uh, let's talk about Israel. Uh, I think. Sure. The question, the question is, because I, I used to do scouting not in Israel. You know, I worked in with Tesca Moscow and uh, with Sevilla and with Dortmund and so on. But um, I, I, I'm not 100% familiar with. The finance in most of the Turkish clubs and what they can pay and transfer fee. At the moment, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm not really into it, uh, so I, I, I cannot say it exactly. So I look at the Israeli market. Um, there is there is one player that if there is uh, if they are clever, mm -hmm. Turkish club they have to move now, not now in the next year. Okay. Okay, so there is a one guy named Liel Abada, A-B-A-D-A. -A -A. He's, I don't know, 18, 17, something like that. He playing for a small club in Israel called Maccabi Petah Tikva, but this is the club that produced maybe the top talent in the country, okay? So they had to run really big talent named Manov Solomon. They sold him to Shakhtar Donetsk for, I don't know, six, seven million euro a year ago. This guy, Abada, will go for the same amount of money, or maybe more, in a year time. If there is someone who is clever, it will take him now for two, three million. Okay, that's what, that, that, that what I'm saying. And so this is, this is what scouting is all about, right? To, to find the opportunity uh, before everyone else. Exactly. Right? So he's, he's a really good guy. He's, he's, he's playing on the wing, he can play on the striker, and he has a run the Avi qualities. That's oh. how we can connect everything together. He has a composure in front of the goal, he's a scorer. And um, yeah, so this is, this is the name I have for you. <laughs> Great. This. This, this, this Turkish club should check, but I don't think they will because there, like, there is no good scouting in Turkey at all. Like, well, problem, just, problem no... in both countries. Problem in Turkey and in Israel. Our management, mm -hmm. mostly, I guess. Just Turkey have have better money. That's the difference. So, but management is not good. Scouting, analyzing, um, it's not top notch, unfortunately. Not even close to top notch. Yeah. <laughs>
And that can be the, my last question, I guess. Like, who is the, what team is your favorite to be champion in Israel this year? Ah, who do, who do I think will be champions? Well, this is, this is not an easy question as last year's. It's mm -hmm. more difficult this, year, this time because Maccabi Tel Aviv, the champions, they lost four, four important players. Um, but still, if I have... And they lost the first match of the season. Mm -hmm. Everything is connected. They lost from one goal of this guy, Abada, I told you about, the talent. Oh. <laughs> um, I'll be sure to watch the goal after. <laughs> but yes, See, but still, I believe they will be the champions. They will be the champions. So uh, yeah, you have you have you have yellow and blue as the champions in Israel. Maybe I don't know. Yeah, we will love yes. we will love that. <laughs> so you're a fan of Maccabi, right? A fan? No, I don't care. Oh, you don't. You just okay. No, uh, well, <laughs> I cannot say basically because um, I have to be neutral. Well, I, I'm I'm I'm broadcasting matches and I'm. Mm -hmm. Analyzing the team, so I cannot have a favorite. Oh, okay. Right. Makes you sense. Mean, fair. Yeah. <laughs> fair enough. Fair enough. <laughs> you know, one last question, very quick question. Okay. How how is Zahavi? Like, is he good at controlling his anger, or like, how is he on the pitch like that? If if a yeah, well, if it's, it's, a good question. it's a good question. He's not. He's not a guy that you will say you have. A temperature that you see immediately that he's hitting, that he's one of those, uh, I don't know, Balotelli guys. I don't know. Uh, but, uh, but you have to remember the story of throwing the Captain Ambra. Yeah? You have to remember the story because this is a crazy one. This is something you can never see. So, yeah, the, the, the, the blood can go in the, to the top of the head in some cases. Um, so I will say it's somewhere in between. Yeah, it's, it's not something typical, but yet it, it happens. So you cannot ignore it, right? If beside him, I can see the Turkish referees uh, really, really getting to his nerves. <laughs> yeah, well, it's, uh, yeah, yeah, I know, I know, it's happened in Turkey. By the way, it's happened in, in, in Israel as well, of course. Oh. You need to have respect. So if you will not get it, We'll see what happens. Yeah. Thank you so much for your time. It's been a sure. pleasure. And it's been an honor to have you. No problem. Thank have you very much. Thank you so much, Mr. Cooper.